What, what up, up guys? guys? Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Safe inside a morning you know, night in the BMB pulling up all the now. Uh, Said she be on the pole with a money bone. Won't stop if you hold it down. What you thinking about putting in a post for now? See the difference when I'm in it can't be sold for now. Reckless is the only way I go for now. I'm gonna lose your hate you when you know I'm not. Some undiscovered heat that is Jazz Vernon. Either way, Damn. available on all streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple Music, Title, Title, all that. Shout out Title, by the way. I love, love but um, yeah, that is Jazz Vernon. For Rock, we here. I was gonna say, it. we don't stop. For Rock is definitely in the building. But on that note, we back. We back. <laughs> we in business. It's been a couple weeks. I'm sorry, we didn't. His Pre- fault. We didn't prepare for two weeks. It is his fault. It is dead, not my fault. But friends, is it not his fault? Uh, yeah. We don't work that way, and y'all know that. We, y'all know we don't work day of. <laughs> you know, that's not how we do things. But um, yeah. So you know, it's the usual three in here. I'm Dapper Dan, of course. Of course, for me is my guy Fritz. Amen. Next to him is my guy Ray, aka the Movie Guy. What's happening, y'all? Good, good. Chilling, man. How was y'all vacation or getaway or I, Tom paid off? Yeah, I went. <laughs> I um, stayed did the same old I shit. I had some some family time, some family business. And, Seen and you on the yacht. You know what I'm saying? Yachts. Yachts. Oh, For me? Plural. My Talk fault. to him. We don't do the solo. Stupid Talk to me. him. It'll be out there on one yacht. <laughs> 17 niggas on one yacht. I couldn't. <laughs> I could never. <laughs> And you had the you had the jet skis on the side, bro. You had yeah, yeah, know that. yeah, yeah. You I mean, bro, but we always do that different. Oh, I mean, get this, this is regular yeah. film. All the you yachts, know, you know him. My, uh, all the uh, yachts line up, feel me? Then we connect them. Ah, and then you know. What you saying? went to the yacht party. From you met up met the other yachts. Yeah. All the yachts is ours. All the yachts is ours. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, my son. <laughs> See, my son was in the form. He went crazy, facts. Yeah, went crazy. yeah, my son was definitely going crazy. Touchdown. I could tell by his face. That nigga dad went crazy, right? Like, that's the person that had a good talk. Absolutely. That's the person that had a good talk. My, my so. man's Ray was uh, in Houston, H-Town. How facts, you facts. Now, I had a good time for me. Spent time with the family. You know, my mom's live out there, so it was good seeing them. Nothing Little crazy. getting bigger and all that. Facts. Yeah. Hey. I was definitely on black though, looking for her. I'm not gonna hold you. you gotta go to the mall, bro. You gotta I went to the mall, but like I went to the smaller mall, not What's the one, not the Galleria. Mm. But honestly, I was just I was just chilling with my family. To be honest with you. You be dolly and nervous when you be trying to holler at girls in Houston. Nah, honestly, like like I said, I was on black. I met up with one shorty. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> for me, that's a story for another day though. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, before we get into um the topics of the day, I just want to say. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to get money. Show a nigga some love, nigga. Wabble dee dabble dee. Niggas out here don't love. It's free. You know what I'm saying? Let's support is free. You know what I'm saying? We only going to go as far as the people that support us. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, we got to put in the work too, but you know what I'm saying? Y'all support definitely helps a lot. But let's get into um first topic of the day. We're going to introduce, start with the lunch line chatter as usual. Um, Conversation on SARS and obviously what's going on in police brutality. You know what I'm saying? Just in general. 
Shit uh, is nuts, my nigga. But, it's a very tough situation right now. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, SARS is the special anti-robbery squad that was assembled in Nigeria in 92. And basically, they were uh, made to uh, protect. And they've obviously, they've just been uh, violating, bro. Like, since their inception, they've been violating. They've been murdering. They've been raping, extorting. And now it's to the point where people are like, this shit has to end. It's been a a constant protest for how long has it been? Like, I think two weeks. Two, no? Yeah, two three weeks. I mean, it's been protest before. Yeah, but, but it's like now the, leaked into the N, America. The NSARS protest yeah, that, type of shit. It's now become a movement. And everywhere. I don't want to say the wrong thing. What was the name of the the gate? I mean, the place that they were at that got shot up. Lucky Toll Gate or something I, like I that. I think that's what it was Lucky called. Lucky Toll. I think that's what it's called. But yeah, like I'm not Nigerian, they turned so. off. Yeah, <laughs> our Nigerian counterpart was supposed to be here. Yeah, yeah facts. Yeah. I'm not going front. <laughs> Regular shit. But they turned off. They, they said they turned off the lights and then they turned off the CCTV and they were shooting from both sides, bro. Like killing innocent people. Like that's what. That's wacky, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, that sounds like some third country, third world country shit, bro. That country. sounds like some massacre shit like that's it's like for me it was just like it's tough because we're in a predicament where it's nothing we can really do besides spread awareness and like the way people have been spreading awareness has low-key turned me off not turned me off but made me like not want to look at certain things or dive too deep into it because it's a lot of like sharing the videos of mm. people get, literally getting shot, yeah. people holding people that's dead. I saw a dude, and it, I'm so bad because I laugh at things I shouldn't laugh at, but like, it was like almost like a cartoon. Like My son was like being held rotisserie style, oh, getting fire, roasted, right? bro, over yeah. a fire. I'm like, what is this, the Looney Tunes? Yeah. Like, really nah. rotisserie You only style. see some shit like that in I'm movies. I'm like, that's nuts, bro. I only see some shit like that in movies. And I'm like, yo, that fun. was like a real human being, human being, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy to me. I never, I haven't seen anything like that in my lifetime, you know what I'm saying? Granted, it's probably always been happening, but I just never seen anything like that being documented. in real life. Yeah. I mean... To be honest, like like Elon said, it sucks. It definitely was a massacre. Um, kind of like what you were alluding to, like I don't know, maybe because like I've always been interested in like the bad things that happen in other countries, which I know sounds crazy, but I've always just like been more in tune with that. It's peak dangerous. Yeah. So like, so like seeing stuff like this is 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 crazy, but like this is like a like you said like police brutality and stuff like that. It doesn't obviously only happen here. Yeah. It's a worldwide thing, and like. It this happens in my country. Like I don't I'm not really that much in tune with like Guatemala and El Salvador, but like the the gangs over there are crazy and like the police they're literally just if you look like a gang member, you're probably gonna get arrested, things like that. So like not to take away from stars or anything like this, but this is definitely like a, a human rights worldwide thing. It's not just SARS, but I'm glad that at least there's uh awareness going on for the Nigerians, except um <clears throat> For Nigerians specifically, because I am friends with a lot of Nigerian people and African people as a whole. So, like, right. I'm glad that, like, there's definitely numbers behind this movement. But, like you said, I don't really know what else I could do besides just be informed and, like, talk about it. To be honest with you, because I don't have money for me. I don't have... <laughs> Power, power, like I don't or influence. That's what I'm saying. Like right. I really don't know. I mean, it's cool. Like you said, like it's cool. Everybody is sharing awareness, and like I think they, it's funny. They had a protest the other day in front of like the Nigerian embassy. Yeah. So like that's cool. That people, I guess, all over the country are gonna start like, uh, marching and like protesting for the SARS and things like that. But. Me personally, again, I I really don't know. Like in situations like this, I really don't know what else to do besides talk about it. Damn. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's unfortunate that that's where we're at with it. Cause exactly. it's like, I me, I'm the type of person. I feel like just talking about it doesn't really get too much done. At the end of the day, like awareness, people, there's certain things that's gonna spread around the globe quick enough that awareness don't gotta be spread all twenty four seven. Like you don't gotta share those videos all damn day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? At a certain point, we gotta move to the next chapter. So that's what my thing is like I can't I don't know how to be a part of the next chapter. It's just fucked up. Like people are really getting killed and robbed and shit because you have an iPhone, because you have earrings in your ears, or because or like you, you have drive a, a certain on. car. Like, Nigga, what? Like bro, that shit is nuts. 
and the the shit that's infuriating that I've been noticing a lot is the governor of Nigeria. He's on social media talking about like how oh he's condemning our SARS and he's ending it or whatever. But who else would command that to happen? Like you're the governor, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And he's taking pictures with victims, bro. You know, like that shit is nuts to me. Like it's something's got to fucking yeah. give, my nigga. And that's why, that's like, I mean, we, right we could always that's a whole nother pod in itself about just the dirty games of politics and why. We all at the table choose not to really get involved because we're aware of the dirty game and the the what's the the lip service that it is and all that other stuff. But I was gonna ask y'all like, I mean, we probably don't have time to really dive into this, but like, did y'all watch the Dr. Umar uh, interview when you had with Nick Cannon? Uh, bits and pieces. I didn't see the whole thing. I watched most of it, and he basically alluded to like, again, like you said, me personally, I can't do anything. But like, Dr. Umar was basically talking about how there's like a certain amount of people that have money mm-hmm. in the world and they're, that small percentage is only made up of like 1%, 2% black people that have money. Right. But he basically was alluding like those are the people that should be doing stuff in these situations in my opinion because they have the money. Like mm-hmm. like they say like money does have some sort of power or influence. So like those people are I feel like when it comes to this awareness and things of that nature I feel like those are the people that should be stepping up. But again, that's when people start getting into politics. Uh, this is capitalism, so it might not feed their personal needs and things right. like that. So, I mean, I feel like if we could push that narrative, like, again, like, if rich people could step up and do the right thing for once, then maybe that will make a difference. But I feel like us on the ground level can only do but oh so much. I mean, yeah, I mean, we can just apply pressure. I mean, that's pretty much all we can really do. To those that do have power, that's what I really can see right. of anything. But I it's think we need to start stop. Yes, watch it. We I I don't I think we need to stop looking for celebs to be our saviors. Like some girl was like, "Oh, if Beyonce had spoke out earlier, <laughs> Nigga said I, me. I she would have like, made a difference." Yeah, I was like, I was like, "What?" I had to quote it. I'm usually the one to ignore. I'm like, "Yo, like who do y'all think Beyonce is, bro?" Like, granted, very influential, probably very powerful as well. But I'm saying, like, she doesn't live in Nigeria. She doesn't, you know what I'm saying? She doesn't she pay, has no way pay the there. president of Nigeria. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she can say where she stands on it and maybe provide, provide funds if necessary. But I don't see where... Nick said if Beyonce had said something. Like, saying. earlier. Not even like she didn't say anything. She said, just she said, oh, we could have prevented it. That's the word she's prevented. I was like, all right, cool. We out here. Yeah. Honestly, this obsession with celebrity, I feel like it's, it's an American thing. Like, I don't think they do this... All around the other parts all of the world. All around other parts of the world, uh, like they idolize a lot of Americans. That's, That's what I'm what saying. saying. Like, yeah. but we put them on that pedestal. Like, right. I feel like, like if we weren't behind them, then they wouldn't have any weight. Like, if we That's could it. just, if we could just like take it, take this at least for face value. Like, celebrities are there because they're there to entertain us. Right. That's it. Like, we shouldn't look for them to do anything besides entertain us then maybe that will make a difference. But like you said, for whatever reason, people really be like so obsessed with celebrities, they look to them as like idols in a way that they can help that's people. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it's a form, almost like worship. I'm like, yeah. You know, like, like that, uh, it's, that's a whole nother part in itself Facts. again. But you know what I'm saying? Like prayers out to those involved in Nigeria. Prayer, I hope that they'll, you know, they find a way to put a complete stop to this. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to, not shout out, but prayers up to those who have family still in Nigeria. Yes, yes. I know I have a lot of African friends, so, you know what I'm saying? If your family has anything to do with that or, you know, is infected in any way, you know, my prayers Damn, go to you. Prayers for Africa in general. I was just about to say that. Not just I mean, Nigeria, yeah. A I mean, that's what the whole situation is definitely yeah. the highlight, but, you know, everywhere needs prayers. All Africans. The world Africans. in general. Yeah. Not even just Africa, as big as Africa is, right. you know what I'm saying? So, like, let's just hope that gets somehow rectified but to move on to something a little more different let me play a quick drop here hey, yo, what the fuck? um yeah <laughs> god damn it ray this shit got it let me see if this works hey, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, we'll leave it at that but um <laughs> yeah i got a new thing i'm not gonna be every week obviously but uh my new thing to pass time some days is to read weird news stories that just kind of make me laugh <laughs> so like um i just don't call something funny these are real news Oh, uh, these are like this is off the story is off of um Huffington Post. Okay, okay. So this should be kind of credible. Very, very credible uh, source. Um, yeah, I usually get a lot of news from Huffington <laughs> Post. So like um the caption goes, 
Brazilian senator caught hiding cash between his butt cheeks. Uh-huh. I, I will go on. How much money was that? Um, I don't know, but let's see. Um, reps for Chicago Rodriguez have not yet commented on the cash allegedly found down in his pants. So, um, Brazilian senator Chicago Riggs was caught in a police raid with money hidden between his butt cheeks on Wednesday. This is October 15th. Uh, you, this is last week, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was last Wednesday. Um, basically, it was a raid. I don't know what they were looking for. I didn't follow up on this story after reading this. <laughs> but essentially, I brought it up because I'm just picturing like getting caught with it. Like you, It's enough to put it there. But just imagine getting caught with it in your butt cheeks. Like, they're like... <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Like, you feel me? Like, that's what really I want to talk about. I didn't really want to talk about him, specifically, even though he's a Brazilian senator. And, like, why are you as a senator getting so I'm trying involved? trying to that money somewhere. So my thing is, I just want to put a scenario to y'all. If y'all were, if, like, a police come raid your spot crazy, no knock warrant, mm, doors out, you got cash or whatever you're not supposed to have, are you going to put the brack in your brack? Or are you, the- gonna, are you going to find a way, place to hide it? Like, what are you doing with the money? Or whatever you're not supposed to have. I mean, I would assume that I would have a stash spot for some bread. I mean, but what if... You got to think flaw, niggas just busting your crib. You know what I'm saying? But I I don't think that I would have... So hypothetically, I would have money out. Um, Hypothetically, I didn't say what you have to hide. But let's say it is money. Let's say it is money. It's hard to have money. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're just taking that (laughs) out, bro. Like, what do you really do? Drugs is a different thing. Uh, uh, Or paraphernalia. Yeah, you could swallow paraphernalia, put mm. put it up your butt. I'm not I'm not doing all that. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole lot going on. I'm saying but you I, wouldn't put up your butt? Bro, if they you raided put the, the brack spot, in your brack? If they raided the, the brack spot, in your brack? I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it depends on the amount. Yeah. Like, it depends on the amount. Because, like, it, it, if, it, if it's me, the spot, I'm not trying like, to go to jail. My nigga, I'm not going to hold you. I'm not like, trying to go to jail. That's the only <laughs> idea. Like, if it's, like, one amount, like, if I could hide it, so I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to Hiding cash, like, I... Cash Pause, but I want to know how he did that. Like, bro. feel me? Like, they didn't really like, say. Like, he, like, like that he shit is. Ro- hey, yo. That's what I'm saying. Pause, but like, that shit probably hurt, my nigga. I'm not going to hold you. Nah, I don't Depending on the amount of money that he has. Oh, God. Let's move on. That's more than a brag. You know what I'm saying? That's, I don't know. How, they didn't disclose how much money it was. I don't know how much you could possibly fit back there. He's a senator. I'm, I'm assuming I've he never has money. Seen it, I've never seen his physique. So I don't know how much he can <laughs> hide. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much he can hide in his butt cheeks, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had a wide set, bro. You know hey, what I'm saying? Yo. I don't know how much. Yo. I'm uncomfortable now. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know how much he can hide, you know, back there. But oh, with that being said. Hey, if I could pause, if I could swallow it, I would do that before trying to put it up the rear end. I'm not going to hold you. I yeah. Mean, I would attempt to do that first. Hey, That's some jail shit. I just wanted to lighten the mood. It was funny to me when I read it. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be funny to you guys. But moving forward from that, um, I guess we want to talk about uh, what happened to 50 Cent and Ice Cube this yeah. week. Uh, they both were under fire yeah. for one for comments and one for seemingly align- aligning himself with who seems to be the enemy at this point in time. Right. So thoughts and opinions, comments, concerns. So gentlemen. again, for those who don't know, Ice Cube has been working with uh, Trump. With uh, it's called the Platinum Plan. They didn't really dive into what exactly it would entail, but it's basically to uplift Black people if uh, to give us more opportunities in America, mm-hmm. whatever that may be. Um, and Fifty Cent, uh, Biden, he released his tax plans, and Fifty said that he. He's not voting for Biden because the, the tax, for example, for 50 in particular would be... Was, well, not to cut you off, but was that confirmed that was Biden's tax plans or is that, was that related to something else? Nah, yeah, it, it is. Uh, it's tax it was confirmed, yeah. But um, but he said, like, he's not going to tax anybody below 400. Yeah, 400. I mean, 400, yeah, you got to be wealthy. Yeah. So, but the, the jump is crazy, bro, because it goes from 37% to 62. 62. Like, I can see why he's mad about that. Yeah, you I'm not gonna saying? lie, bro. I mean, go ahead, finish up. And then he said, "Oh, I want to be 20 cent. Vote for Trump." I mean, real shit. I mean, he so can't get. That, I can't get mad at him for that. People, people on. Uh, oh, and then uh, after those like comments, there was a picture of Ice Cube and Fifty together, and then they had uh, mm-hmm. altered yeah. Trump. Hacks. They photoshopped. Yeah, 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 yeah and Eric it. Trump had posted. And then he that. fucking reposted it. Niggas. Just, like, no. Regular 50 cents, son. <laughs> Yo, you gotta so, love it, son. I'll go for it. I think it's 40. I mean, I honestly don't believe in anything that Trump says, so I don't... I think that 
platinum plan is a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of malarkey. I mean, I don't think that was Trump's. I think that was Ice Cube's title for it. That mm-hmm. wasn't Trump's I- Whatever title the case for it. Is. I mean, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But like working with him, I don't think that it's really gonna be the case. Like he hasn't done it, and I, I just feel like this is just a, a a tactic to get the black vote. I mean, from my understanding, what like from what I understand, I think what what happened was I thought he presented it to both parties. Yeah. One party said, "Yo, we'll talk about this after the election." That party being the Biden campaign, the Democrats, right? Um, and then. Trump's campaign was obviously like, let's talk about that now. Now, my thing is, I see the whole plan with Ice Cube with the whole, sometimes you got to align yourself with the enemy to make change. That's kind of how I viewed it with the Jay-Z going to the NFL thing. That kinda Dr. How... Umar kind of alluded to this. In his so interview. that too. I did see that piece on clip as well. So with that being said, I see that. However, my issue with this is A, timing, and B, like I said, well, actually, not even B, A, just timing. This is just not the time for it. I can see why, you know, Biden's camp said what they said, because if we don't win this election, we can't do shit anyway. So, like, let's talk about this when it when we can do something about it. Cool. Trump, on the other hand, obviously, you're in power right now. You can technically do something. But, obviously, we know who he is, and this is not going to go our way. You know what I'm saying? But, obviously, I kind of salute Ice Cube for trying. But like I just think the opportunity came at an ill placed Ill-based time so that you know that he should have you know waited for this election season to probably be over to pursue this junk this opportunity right. is my my thoughts on it I, I actually didn't think about it that way when you put it that way then yeah like I guess the only knock I will have against ice cube is the timing because he could have waited like I mean that's said. if you're somebody that wants Biden to you know win the election. I mean, yeah. it just in general, like mm-hmm. you said, it, it's the timing because mm-hmm. whether it would have been Biden or him, you're assuming when it comes to politics, they're not. For me, you're you're helping both parties have the benefit. That's how politics work. So Ice Cube wants to get this off the ground. Obviously, these two candidates want to have some sort of black vote mm-hmm. or help their their chances with the black vote. So Trump, like I said, like maybe obviously is using this as a tactic to get the black vote. But in Ice Cube's head, he thinks he's helping black people by pushing this narrative, whether he has to hook up with Trump or not. He just wants to get this done. Mm-hmm. That's Ice Cube's point. Um, As far as, like, is it right or wrong? I mean, I don't see anything wrong with hooking up with Trump per se, because, like, 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 people say, like, this is politics. Ice Cube has money. And Most of the works. time, these people that have money, they don't like us, per se, if you really want to be technical. So, like, just because it may not have been Trump, it could have been somebody else that it's not the face of the country that we don't really know about. That doesn't make them a good person either. That's why, I, That's why. like, for me, I don't understand why there's always some backlash when it comes. Like, yes, Trump is not a good person, but it's like he does get some stuff done. He is a funny guy as well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, nigga, too. He is Trump, funny. Trump not funny, bro. I don't fuck that nigga is funny. I'm not going for him because he Trump talks wasn't shit. the president, I dead. Wouldn't mind him that much, bro. He was the executive but, but, producer of a reality show, but because he's the president <laughs> is why we don't like him. Trump is some guy like just chilling. If we brought Trump to the pod, but my, before but we would then have a blast. Hip hop, hip hop, <laughs> and black people before this fucked with Trump. Exactly. Like, feel me? Like, it wasn't until he be like you said became president where the whole slander happened. But like, he's been doing this. He been he been fucking with. Underage girls, he been doing races and all this stuff. And they can just care about money. That's right. all he care about. He's to be honest with dude. you. But just like in 50 Cent's case, like, I can't get mad at... This is America. We all want to... If you want to get mad, get mad at capitalism because once you're rich, you get rich by being cheap and saving money. And if you want to be technical, yes, if I'm rich, I don't want half, more than half my money to go back to the government. That's what I was saying. That, that's that's my thing with voting because like, I, my thing was, like, when I'm explaining to you why I don't vote, I'm like, because if I want to, voting, you're supposed to go vote for who has your best interest. Mm-hmm. That, am I correct? I think that's what I was I would I would think that's the point of it. Exactly. But niggas are telling me to go vote, to go vote for Biden. But what if my interest is better served with Trump? Like, if I'm rich like 50, like he said, I'm not saying expect anything better from 50. Like, he's going to do say shit. Exactly. Like, this is what he's going to do. But at the same time, it's like, if I'm about to lose 62% of the money I make to taxes, like... Trump might be my yeah. guy. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not... And not, I can't get mad at you. people, I'm not voting. I'm not, well, the place to vote in this matter this year. 
I'm not the guy, bro. I'm not. You shouldn't not. get mad. Like we say, <laughs> celebrities in general don't look for these people to be like any influence on these candidate policies anyway. Like that bro, shouldn't that, even be the case. It's, it's annoying because it's dead both ways, my nigga. Like if I've seen it so many times, like Kevin Hart, for example, he um, bigged up, I think, Harris. And then all in his comments, Trump 2020, clown, mm-hmm. Trump 2020. Like, bro, they be going crazy. Like his... His fucking followers are psychopaths, my nigga. That shit is weird. Bro, I was in when I was out in Florida. Like, oh, you seen the yeah, the Trumpers? Yeah, OD it was Democrat. I seen the Democrats for Trump. I was like, oh, yeah, we. See, <laughs> yeah, like, but bro, and they nuts, bro. They dead. Look, like they look like how you think they look, bro. No funny. They I think Stephen, in my opinion, Stephen Jackson said the best line when it comes to this voting shit was like all this talk about you got to vote for the lesser evil. Evil is evil at the end of the day. Right. So. Preaching that narrative is dumb, in my opinion. If you don't want to vote, don't vote. And don't get castrized because niggas don't want to vote. Like, that's simple as that. Right. This is, again, yeah, I want to talk all this America stuff. I have the right to vote or not vote. Right. And niggas talking about, oh, my ancestors died for... Yeah, they gave they died for the right to, to vote. So that you have the chance to go do it if you feel you want to. You know what I'm saying? Rosa Parks and sat on that bus for the option to sit wherever you want to sit. You know what I'm saying? Not like, that we don't go straight to the back, back anyway, the bus, you know? Exactly. <laughs> like, that, I was just talking to my father. Like, I watched a whole bunch of documentaries in my off time. Nothing has changed. We've got the right to vote. We got all of these rights. Nothing has changed. So you telling me me voting is going to make a difference? Stop it. Because I've yet, like I said, I've yet, I've only been alive 25 years. I've yet to see a president that I actually fuck with. Besides Obama. And even that, I wasn't really old enough to vote. Exactly. So like feel me like, I don't know niggas feel me believe in the American dream I guess. Politics be losing me, bro. Nah, big facts it do. It's just it's a dirty game. It's a, yeah, it's, and it's too dirty for me to really even involve myself even via vote. It's a money people to, game to be honest. That's what I'm saying. But um, moving on from that, we've fin- finished out the lunch line chatter. Uh, we're gonna move on to the cookie crumb segment. It's gonna be a short cookie crumb segment this week. Um, this is actually yours, so you can yeah. read this out. So um. While we were filming on vacation, I believe Jesus, what Jeezy's young Jeezy, Jesus. now Jeezy, <laughs> wife. I don't really know her name. I'm not gonna lie to you. Gina, Jen, Gina, G- Gina May. It's Gina May. Gina Jeezy. Aye, Gina, Gina, Gina Jeezy. Gina, Gina May. Jeezy. Aye. Right. Let's call her Gina Jeezy. Gina right. Jeezy. I like that. Either way, she was interviewed by I don't know who she was interviewed, but either way, during the interview, they had asked her. Or she alluded to this whole narrative where people talk about, oh, you know, marriage submissive is like a, it's a thing, I guess you could say. It's a, it's looked down upon these days for women because women, the whole feminist movement. Exactly. You, the, the, they don't want to submit to men per se. Exactly. That's the narrative. So in her, when they Especially were asked her, men. yeah, when they asked her, it's, it, when they asked her about it, she basically said more or less, I'm not verbatim, but more or less, she said that as a, she feels she's a dominant woman. She has her own business. She has money. She has all these things, but which we will look at as making her a strong black woman mm-hmm. and independent. All those good things, and qualities. Um, but she feels that. It's Jeannie May. But she feels what? Is is Jeezy's wife not Asian? Yeah, he cooked a strong black woman. Oh, you oh, did? I thought she was black. I, didn't, I wasn't even. I wasn't even listening. Nah, I heard that. She's Asian. Asian. I thought she was black she's or Asian. Asian. Nah, nah. She says I think she's straight Asian. Okay, well, a strong woman. My fault. Strong woman in general. Either way, she said. That as a woman that's married to a man in her marriage, she likes for it to be in her the way the way she likes for it to be is basically when she comes home, she doesn't want to be the it provider. She doesn't want to be so strong, I guess you could say. She wants to submit to her husband in a mm-hmm. sense where she trusts in him to take care of things around the house or whatever how she feels interprets being submissive. Right. Because that's another thing is people interpret the word submissive very very differently and it's funny because this this whole interview and this whole um clip happened a couple of days after miles was at my crib and we was just chilling and mac and we just feel me we always chopping it up and we talked about this whole submissive you know girls submissing being submissive to guys and i told him in my opinion i don't care who you are i don't care how much money you are as a woman or anything like that in my head you can't convince me as a woman I feel like all women want to be led in some sort of way. Mm. They, they, for me, submissive to me is being led. Whether or not 
you're going to be led to the wrong things or the good things. I don't know, but you are being led by somebody. That's how I interpret being submissive. So I would think, in my head, again, like she said it perfectly, I feel like that's very tiring for a woman in general to always be the strong. The, the strong figure, to never have to, like, relax and kick back, feel me? That's very, like, off-putting to men, too, like... Not not off putting, but like for me, we want to cater to women. Like for me, we we want to please you too. We can't really cater or please if you're always the being so strong and like guard mm. up. You no, know, feel me. Right. So in some sort of way, I feel like I don't care. I feel like women in general want to be submissive or led in some sort of way by men, whether they want to admit it or not. And I just thought I wanted to see how y'all felt for me. That was a very strong point. Like I, I concur, bro. Like. Uh, I, I, it sounds it sounds crazy, no, but I like see the, the way you putting it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It sounds crazy, but the, it's it's all on how you interpret the yeah. word submissive. Right. Mm-hmm. Some people take it as feel me they're gonna be controlled mm. to do bad things when necessarily that's not always the case. Or just controlled in general. Exactly. Just don't want to let go of that. But mm-hmm. I can only imagine for a woman to be so strong all the time. That must be get very tiring. Feel me, like. I mean, the way I look at it is like, look at it from this perspective. I mean, firstly, for myself, before I even get into that, I believe the perfect household is at its strongest when the man is the head of the household. I personally believe that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's, I mean, you people could say, I mean, that comes from like biblical scriptures and stuff like that, but yeah, I believe it to be true, you know what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to a woman being dominant and like, being dominant at home and in her workplace stuff like like you said that definitely can get tiring and like I just want to put it to like a man's perspective like think about as a man how much things you have to like hold in and how you know strong and how you don't really have nobody to talk to sometimes because you got to just hold that take it on the chin you know what I'm saying take that on the chin take that on the chin you know what I'm saying and then all of a sudden you just got all this stuff built up because you got to be the dominant strong man you know what I'm saying to everybody else right. so like as a woman I feel like they get the opportunity to be you know, like, you can be dominant in your workplace. If you got to be a boss, be a boss. You got to make tough decisions. You got to tell people what it is, be firm, then do you. But at the same time, it's also a matter of fact is you get to come, they get to come home. And a man should feel this comfortable as well, but it obviously takes man to get to this point. But they get to come home and, you know, be submissive, let things out, you know, talk, be soft, be the mom, be the wife, you know what I'm saying? Let things be, you know, easy, you know what I'm saying? Feel good, make the nice, your man a nice meal, or y'all a nice meal as a family, you know? Sit down, and just relax. You know what I'm saying? Women get that, and I feel like they be trying. Women be trying to give that up these days, to in a in the sense of trying to play them. It's gonna sound better, but to play a man's role, like yeah. to play a more masculine role, is the better term, I guess I would say. So like that's just my take, and I don't really like the whole like women fighting to give up something that I think might be pretty good for them. But like it goes yeah. back to even what you said, people view submissive as something really negative, when in actuality, I believe it can be more a more positive. Than negative, but that's really all I had on that. Yeah, that's a good point. That's all as far as I want to take that. Yeah, I think it's part of it. Facts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, with that being said, we gotta move into the bag of the week. Let me just drop this drop. <sighs> I'm about to bust. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we in the bag of the week. That has to be that's baddie a of the week. My favorite topic. Yeah, so this is you. Yeah. I got this baddie of the week this week and shout out this is our first time this this is the first time we have a non-celebrity per se as a baddie of the week her name is A-N-S underscore Lee L-E-E-Y Ans Lee I'm gonna assume that's how you pronounce her name but shout out to you because a video went viral of basically an armed robbery and from what I can tell from the video there was a car I'm gonna assume a a man, it could be mm-hmm. her husband, husband, father. Don't I don't know, mm-hmm. but basically they ran on him, ran up on him outside. It led into the crib. The whole time, Shorty's in the bed, but the video cuts to her. Cause they have it's a basically a security camera. Yeah, it's whole security camera basically cuts to her. Shorty gets the grip. Pops up. First time out. She hopped out of bed with, with the, the fattest with ass. The most ass. Respectfully. Yo, respectfully, 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 she, respectfully. Uh, shit was definitely plump. <laughs> Very plump. That definitely was definitely uh, real good right there. Hey, 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 hey. Either- relax, 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 relax. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> that's, that's somebody's wife. Yo, right. but either way, for me, Shorty got her with the strap and like helped her man out in a way where she made it seem that the children were in her right. room when, so my in, son is here. when in reality they weren't in the room yet. 
She had the gun to basically call and draw the robbers to her in the room, shouting, oh, my kids are in here. Don't shoot at me. Mm-hmm. And when the robbers, I guess, heard her and started approaching the room, she started letting off shots. Obviously, when the robber, the robbers started dipping, husband got up, got the grip from her, told him, yo, get the kids, stay in here, and went to go take care of business. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, I'm not going to front. One, Gangster that shit straight was mad sexy. Straight Two, sexy. shout out to you because most shorties would have folded in that situation. That's how I know <laughs> you are a real, real baddie of the week. No funny baddie shit. Baddie of the month, my nigga. Yeah, yeah, that's... But she saved her fucking family. Yo, when, when... I don't know... Again, people interpreted this differently, but when I talk about a ride or die, that is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want you to be like that. Okay. It's a, nah, like literally ride or, or die. Or die, feel me? In this situation, don't fold. Please help me out. I need help. <laughs> Our family needs help. <laughs> All the way left, my nigga. Nah, OD, OD, bro. So, so hard. Shout out to her, bro. That's glad, facts. Glad shit didn't go, you know, bad. Oh, somehow, hopefully, the video could play here. If not, we'll tag whatever. You can find the video at. But shout out to you, Ansley. Facts. Um, with that being said, we're moving on to the free free segment. Um, wow, this is just very centric. So we just go. This is Yo, this segment. actually just again. I get all my topics usually from just conversations I have with my mans. So me and Fredo actually the other day were just talking about. And this is actually a very good question. I meant to say that in the chat when you put this or brought this up. Yo, a very good question. We 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 very were talking question. about. It started out with us talking about which boroughs were better between like Brooklyn and Queens and shit like that. Well, either way, we were just to, we were just talking about boroughs and shit like that. And I always said Queens. To me, the only thing good about Queens is the girls, respectfully. Mm. Um, because nah, that's Qu- real shit. Queens girls is baddies. What else Shout out is, to y'all. What else y'all niggas got, boy? But 50 cent. <laughs> we gonna talk about that another day because to me, Queens is overrated. But hey, niggas gonna say I'm a hater. <laughs> True, but either, either way, neither, neither here nor there. True. When I was describing the Queens girls, I was like, yo, them shorties, you know, regular should be bougie, they always in the crib and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then Fredo has said he doesn't really think they're bougie, he thinks they're shallow. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, I never really thought about it being separate. I thought like shallow comes with like I thought they were synonymous, mm. so that made me think, and I thought we should talk about it. Was like, can you be shallow and not bougie? Yeah, that's a great question, and honestly, I'm not a hundred percent on where I stand, but I will say, I do think they're probably they're, synonymous. They're, they're very synonymous. They're very if they're not synonymous, they're very close to being. I synonymous. really had to think about it, but I that don't think they're synonymous. I think why, they're, why, synonymous. Why think they're what, synonymous. Because you could not be bougie, you could be the most ratchet person in the world and still be shallow. Mm. Like you could be some fly hood nigga for me that's your shallowness where like is, you shitting on everybody, but, you not fly, you some broke nigga for me. But but necessarily they're not gonna be bougie, like feel me per se. They're not gonna be to me, bougie is like high class, like high maintenance and stuff. For me, you could you, you them niggas could be the coolest people in the world. They just shallow. I see that every day. I don't know, cause my thing is this. Cause the question is, can you be shallow and not bougie? Mm-hmm. I feel like once you're shallow, you're automatically stepping into that bougie lane. Yeah. Because I mean, granted, you may not have the gear or the fly, whatever, to that's match the bougie. But it's I, like I said, like you said, a mindset. I really think that it, that's what to me would make it walk the synonymous line. Because I, I, shallow, shallow, I just mean like you lack substance as a person. Mm-hmm. You lack substance as a person. Hmm. Huh. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that makes I guess sense. Yeah, how you interpret shallow? I was gonna say that, like shallow. T- mm-hmm. I w- that makes sense. I guess I would say the same thing. But to put it in a physical terms, I would think shallow, you know, for me, regular shit, niggas be fly and shit on broke niggas and stuff like that. Right. But again, like, you, I hear what you're saying, but that's how I guess I feel about bougie. I feel like bougie is more so an attitude mm. or like a mindset where like, again, you could be shallow, but I wouldn't necessarily see, think that's your entire mentality for me. Because again, I, I'm not going to say I'm shallow, but like, I'm not bougie either. So it's like, I know people that are may come off as shallow, but they're not bougie. Like again, like I see that every day. I feel like that's regular, regular block hood shit. Like niggas, niggas be shallow. I'm not gonna front. You don't have money, niggas might shit on you. Now this is the question to ask the people. This is when we yeah, have, like can you be shallow I and need, not bougie? Yeah, we need responses. Yeah, that's, on this. That's, that's a good take on it though. I'm not gonna front. Fredo, that had me thinking for a minute, and I feel like they're not synonymous. Like they could be very separate. Nah, hmm. when you put it like that, I could. Yeah, they can be. 
Yeah. I mean, I think it all comes down to what you define as shallow and what yeah. you define as bougie, but definitely great point you made. You know what I'm saying? I feel like either or, you know what I'm saying? So I really, like I said, I don't have a definitive answer. We could come back to this. We, we could, could ask the people. This, yeah, I'm saying this is definitely something I would come back to, even with a different crowd of crowd of people in here. I mean, maybe follow us on IG, follow us on Twitter. Probably take a poll. Can you be shallow and not bougie? Yeah, simple. Honestly, yeah, yes or might, no? You might just post this clip. Keep it a being that us. But um, moving forward off of that, um, I have put this topic in here, and I just wanted it came to my mind randomly, as most topics I have do, and basically it was. Respecting a hustle versus championing it. Now, by that, I mean, in this day and age, there's a lot of hustles. We're doing a lot of stuff, whether it's selling clothes, not selling clothes, selling drugs, not selling drugs, selling ass. You know what I'm saying? We're just doing a lot of stuff. So with that being said, I'm like, I feel like we're beginning, or not even beginning, but we've been champion, championing these hustles instead of just respecting it. What do you, what do you mean now, when I say that, when I say championing, I mean, we're making it seem like this is something you should do. Like, like when it comes to like selling drugs, we're making it seem like that's something you should do. Like, if you don't have bread at all, go sell drugs and you get money and you know what I'm saying? You stack your bread. When in actuality, we shouldn't be pro- promoting that necessarily. I feel like that's the word I'm looking for. We're promoting those hustles more than I feel like we should be. Because, like, my thing is this. Like, for example, I came across a girl. She was stripping for money. Obviously, you strip for money. But um, <laughs> <laughs> she was stripping. And then with the money she saved, she ended up, I think, investing into, like, a, a trucking company or whatever the case is. Wavy. Great. Great. Wavy. She had a plan. Exactly. But my thing is, everybody in the comments was championing her for, like, going through the stripper route. and then Trials do, and tribulations. Right. Of that. And my thing is, I feel like she's a rare case where you go in there with the plan to, you know what, this is what I'm going to do next. I feel like a lot of times these days, it's just, yo, I need bread. Let's go let's, do this. Let's, let's strip or let's sell And then I'm saying, we have to do this because yeah. it worked out for this person. Exactly. Okay. Instead of, like, like this shit, I feel like you shouldn't be nine, 18, 19 years old. I mean, granted, situations vary. Yeah. Situations vary. But 18, 19 years old, and this is your 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 option. This right. is what you go to. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be plan A for anybody. And I'm not trying to sex hustle shame. This is for any hustle that's not necessarily legal or not necessarily looked well at. This you know goes for, like you said, drug dealers, too. They're yeah. part-time drug dealers. Anybody that's, you know what I'm if saying? If you're getting money in, it's not legal. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Not even. Not it could even, be legal, too. Because stripping is technically Shorty legal. selling cream. You know what I'm saying? But, and, but, and purses that literally but, everyone, but, they all but have that's, the that's, same. That's not, that's not a thing that's really legal. Like, you know, no, so this, no, no. I, I sorry to cut you off. Feel me again. This goes back to our whole I feel topic when we talk about like is being an entrepreneur entrepreneur cool or like feel me. It feels like everyone wants to be some sort of entrepreneur trendy. when again some people are not meant to be that. Right, and it takes for you to realize that. To me, I mean, y'all, know, y'all niggas know me. I, I never like that saying, oh, respect the hustle for me. Sometimes I don't even think you should respect niggas' hustle because niggas is playing with it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, like, to me, shorties, there's nothing wrong with selling clothes and stuff like that. I feel like there's something wrong when literally all the shorties have the same vendor and they're selling the same shit. Because, mm-hmm. like, what is making you different from the other girl? Mm-hmm. Y'all literally are all in the same lane. It goes back to what he said about that, like, People are just doing it because they see other people doing it. Exactly. Which I don't think is cool in any type of way because I feel like it takes away from the real actual hustlers. Right. For me, like like they say the game is watered down. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur when in reality, sometimes it's not meant for you. You might give niggas bad customer service and fuck uh, and turn somebody off from even copping from other people's clothes in general. Right. They might just stay with the regular Gucci's and whatever for me the regular reliable there's sources a bad I'm sorry to cut you off there's a bad narrative for just black companies like having bad customer yeah. service you know what I'm saying like niggas gotta kill that shit but either way like I said like I, I respect girls like that that have a plan cause like like we say some people they don't have any plan they're just doing it to do it mm-hmm. obviously if you have to make a means to an end some people r- hustled from a means to an end right so an end, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. There is an end. Yeah. Like whether it's, it's to a million dollars yeah, or whatever. I stack this amount to invest or I stack this amount to pay for this. Yeah. Cool. It's not I'm stacking, I'm stacking, I'm stacking just to stack. And like I said, this is no shame to 
anybody in the sex industry because I feel like that's what they think we're probably going to do. No, no. Not that I'm, at all. I'm it's talking about in general. Niggas that sell drugs, you know what I'm saying? Niggas that just do stuff that isn't for them necessarily, you know? Things of that nature. But like I said, my main point was just I can get it. We can respect it, but we don't have to champion it. We don't have to crown it. As I don't like, really respect it. You know what I'm saying? We like, want to respect it. thing to do. That's yeah. serious, cause like I said, I feel like most of the time should be for play, play anyway. Like niggas just want to make like it's not the role with making a side hustle, but like don't champ like you said, don't promote it like 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 this is like you're you're different. Yeah. Like feel me? Like I know you're supposed to market yourself as different, but my nigga, if you're literally selling the same thing somebody else is 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 doing. You then it's nothing different about you. Feel me? Right, right. I'm not gonna hold you. And again, I also don't like some, some like some vendors or these people. I feel like they ripping the people off because they be upping the price on their own shit. Right. So it's like yo, like feel me? Again, some people say respect the hustle, but I respect the people that are the real hustlers. I could tell the difference. Some people can't. I feel like it is based on what it is that you see and how you interpret hustling and people with that matter. I don't know. Absolutely. I'm mean, passionate today. Facts. We potting today for sure. Only <laughs> it's right. been a minute. Yeah, it's we have that right. shit to talk about. Right. Um, but that closes out the free free segment for sure. Um, with that being said, we're gonna move into microphone check. Um and with that, I guess we can start here. Uh this is yeah, this is a very heavy episode. But um Yeah, I didn't start uh, this. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all could have done missed the topics of my nigga. We could talk about new music first. I'd rather talk about new music first. Let's 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 talk about new music first. With new music, I just want to start off with um first. Okay, I'll start here actually. Um yeah, with uh Benny the Butcher. Uh Benny the Butcher dropped Burden of Proof. This is his first 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 studio album. Is that technically his first debut studio album? So um with that being said, um highly enjoyable project. Highly highly enjoyable project. I if I had to give this a number, I'd give it like an eight out of ten for sure. I'd give it higher than that. I'd definitely Who's give this like an eight out of ten for sure. I'm definitely running this back at least four or five times since it dropped straight through. And I my favorite track off of this is um Slide Green. I love that shit just sound like when I bump it, it sounds like I'm listening to like Get Rich or Die Trying or some shit. Like that shit yeah. really give me that vibe. So how y'all feel like I like hearing other people's like what their favorite song is. Yeah. Cause like me personally, I like my favorite song is New Streets. Mm. Cause I like I like if I had to give the album a ranking, this shit is like at least a nine for me because mm-hmm. I feel like this was one of the most anticipated albums of the year and it delivered on all facets. Right. Like, obviously, Benny got the bars, the songs was there, it was short, concise, to the point, the features. I was sketchy on that first, but they all meshed well for me. And, and my- Hit Boy was also on the executive- Facts. Hit Boy delivered on all the beats. Shout out to him because he's been killing it. Um- Again, I, I prefer New Streets, and I feel like the message of the album as a whole is why I love Benny. Like, this nigga is the nicest rapper I've heard in a while. I'm not going to front. And I feel like he keeps it so real because I feel like the album, like Benny, regular Benny shit, he gives you both sides. Like, mm-hmm. this nigga has money. He, we just talked about he sold drugs, but that he he doesn't glorify it. The nigga says on New Streets, like, yo, like, he feel, he says, I'm probably going to fuck the bar up, but he says, like, He's tired of these rappers only rapping about luxuries. Mm. For me, and I felt that because that yeah, shit do get tired. Right. He was talking about like how he had sometimes he sat on some some parts yeah. sometimes. Like he had to me? take like, this shit to Tennessee. Yeah. His girl was like, "Yo, be safe. I got the strap. That didn't make her feel any less worried." Like, feel me? <laughs> yeah. Like that's real shit, bro. I'm not. A, I'm not. Feel me? I'm not cut from that cloth like him. But I felt a lot of this shit because I've seen people do this. Mm-hmm. I've seen. I know people that went through that. And maybe I was halfway there, but not. But like I'm like, yo, I really respect this nigga's pen. I hit miles. I hit mad people up. Like, yo, I don't understand how niggas could be this nice. <laughs> if I'm a rap, if I'm a rapper right now, I'm back in the lab ASAP because <laughs> this nigga just blew my head off, bro. Pause. But like, this shit is incredible. I'm not going front. I've ran this shit back many times already. Like, this shit is crazy. New streets, all them shits is fa- valid, bro. I. Definitely only listen to it once, but I am going to run it back. Eight out of ten, just like you said. It probably would be high if I ran it back. Um, and I concur with what you said. Like, a lot of rappers and artists these days, my nigga, they like to saturate the shit out of the albums. It'd be like a thousand songs. Over It's a streaming actually. game. It's a streaming game. This nigga had 12 songs. He got to the point. Everything was clean. Like, transition was cool. Like, this was a good piece of work, my nigga. This is a good piece of work for sure. That Dom Kennedy feature was better than I expected. And people were kind of hating that song, but that shit was actually fire too. Yeah, yeah. 
That show him and Gibbs is fire. The yeah. fucking the war paint. That's fire. You fuck with uh, Big Sean's verse on there. Nah, I never. I'm not gonna <laughs> fight. Like I kind of, I kind of skip. I kind of skip. For me, oh man, I kind of skip that part of the song. Yeah, I'm not gonna you're with you. On there. Yeah. It, it, it's not bad. It's not a bad verse. It's not a bad. Verse. It's not his best verse ever. But it's, it's I mean, good I fuck with. I always say Big Sean's best verses are on other people's features. songs. So like, <laughs> I like that he went at Kanye. I guess like he feel. I feel like he took the tactic from country. You know, when you just other people on other people's songs. Mm-hmm. So I, it's corny in that sense. I guess you could say because like I guess the shock value, but. It is what it is. It didn't take away from the album for me. Right. Like, Wayne Wayne got off on there too. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. Wayne got off on that's that. That's the best verse on the, on the, like feature verse on the whole album, yeah, in my Wayne, opinion. Wayne, yeah, because I, I got put I mean Con, Conway woke, but like that yeah. Wayne I haven't heard Wayne rap like that in a minute. I'm not gonna I hold it. Wayne, Wayne getting his back. Facts. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um moving on from Benny, um another project that came out what the week before that was Savage Mode Two, right? Yeah. Where we had it's left off two. last last three? week. No, three two. Weeks. It was two weeks ago? It went when we was on vacation. Like, I know when we that were was on two vacation. Weeks ago, oh, whenever the case. But yeah. It was it was like, at the same time. It's tiller shit. Yeah. Mm. So, how we feel about that? I mean, 21 Savage is my guy. I fucked with it, but I anticipated more, mm. personally. Mm. Um, it was cool. It was a cool cool album. A lot. I've seen a lot of slander and a lot of hate for it. I didn't see that much hate. I didn't see that much hate either. I've seen a lot of people actually like really, lot. really going hard for the album. Yeah, I didn't see that much that much hate. Nah, bro. I seen different really? Yeah, different sources, bro. <laughs> I didn't see that much hate. I seen at least what people like, were saying. Like, what was they hating about it? It was like that shit was dirt. Like, I seen that for the Tilla album. Nah, <laughs> yeah, because Tilla album. album shit was dirt. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, for twenty, like I was seeing posts on like Facebook and then other people commenting like, "Oh, no funny shit. That shit was that bad." Like, what? I mean, but. I mean, people always jump in the gun. I feel like because a lot of people be judging albums off the first. They didn't even get through the album yet. Uh, yeah, and they'd be like, yo, this shit ass. Track three. <laughs> like, I'm like, bro, like, you know. Running is my favorite shit on there, though. That shit yeah. is crazy. Nah, that's, that's the intro, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that shit is crazy. I mean, that shit was funny. The nigga had Morgan Freeman as narrator. Yeah. That whole, yeah. Bro, that's, a, like, that's a big flex. That's what? a big, big the flex. Higher shit. He was fucking narrating. I think it, I seen an interview or they interview uh, Morgan Freeman about that. And he was saying, like, like when they approached him, he was like, uh, like uh, I looked at it and I saw there was wisdom here. Like, I saw there was wisdom here. So <laughs> I, took, Morgan, I was like, so I, I, I took the job. I was like, yo, yeah, shout out to myself, Morgan. Like, that's a real nigga. Morgan, that's fire. That's dead fire. But nah, um, overall, like 21's my guy. Um, obviously, when, I wouldn't put this over Savage Mode 1 at all, but yeah, no. it was a solid project to me. Solid being, you know, cool. I got, it got some joints. I got a, more than a few joints yeah. on there I really bop with. And that's all I really expected out of Savage Mode, just getting some bops off of it. I didn't really expect it to be a whole, you know, album that, like, I didn't expect it to be Benny shit. I didn't expect yeah. it to be some cohesive work of art. Like, it's... I was going to say, I always felt like 21, at least his albums, they always felt to me like a slow burn. Nah, like, I, I, it, like in the beginning, like at least for me, I guess, I guess for me, 21 is a slow burn for me. Mm. But, like, because I feel like at first, when I listened to Savage Mode 2, it was okay. But, like... I ran it back a couple of times and like it's a couple more songs I fuck with like that for me I feel like I don't know sometimes Metro be hit or miss for me like nah, sometimes, for sure Metro is definitely hit or miss yeah I feel like sometimes like he's too repetitive with the beats like mm-hmm. that's how I feel like it was on this album a little bit sometimes I feel like the beat wasn't switched up enough for me mm-hmm. but like certain songs that nigga was spitting I'm not gonna friends 21 was definitely spitting uh, I, I gotta look it up but I feel like it was in the middle part of the album is when he started picking picking up the bars. His most recent solo album is called I Am, right? Yeah, I Am Greater Than I Was or something like that. But that, that shit surprised the fuck out. Nah, I, I think his albums are different because like even his debut album, um, I forgot what it's called. Um, Whatever his debut shit was. It was Issa? Issa, yeah. Issa, yeah. Issa, Issa, yeah. I'm like, it was I never liked it. I never liked that one. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. It wasn't like great, I always liked Savage Mode and then... um. They have different feels than like a Savage Mode. Yeah. Mode, you know? I was gonna say the song I'm talking about. I think it's called My Dog, but Stepping on That's Niggas is fire too. Oh yeah, I like Stepping on Niggas. Yeah, man. but um, I'm here to slander Bryson Tiller. <laughs> nah. Yo, don't ever be in love and then make an album about like not being in love and falling out of love, my nigga. If you're going to make that <laughs> shit, then fall out of love, my nigga. And that's all I got to say on that. <laughs> don't come out here faking out of being out of love. <laughs> you know the niggas that been in and out of love, like, you feel me? I, I they, they need that, bro. And you wasn't giving them the real feels. Amen. Yo, I, but the video you put out today, or was it yesterday, was kind of cool with Kilani. Word? I didn't even see that. I got to say yeah, that. Yeah, it was a decent that, video. No. I, I didn't like the album either. Yeah, I uh, just didn't. It didn't have the heart that like yeah, it's supposed to. Perfect word. I didn't feel it at all. I was gonna say Tom's definitely running my boys. Ah, uh, we good. 
I was gonna say that um, at least for Bryce and Tiller, I feel like these are the songs that didn't make the original album. That's how I've been feeling about Tilla in general. Because <laughs> he's saying he has another project coming. Like, this is just something to, like, hold us off. Mm. He said he has something else coming. Obviously, I'm going to listen to it, but it is what it is. I'm, I wasn't really feeling it as a Tiller, I guess, quote-unquote fan or Facts. somebody that looks for his, forward to his music. It wasn't for me. Um, also, okay. y'all probably didn't listen, but a decent listen is T.I.'s album as well. I the did Libra. not listen to it at all. It's, um, I like the first 65% of it. The last, like percentage of it is kind of like too woke for me but like the first like 65 percent is pretty cool just would, if you would want to listen to it. i would listen to it while like, you're working out it has good songs for that I, i'm I don't think I'm, I'm gonna listen to ti yeah but um moving forward with that ti um also got uh caught clout chasing a little bit well I'd yeah, call I just, it I, chasing. yeah i wanted to to ask y'all if y'all thought it was clout chasing because I, was he even really aware I, of the situation i think it is because he definitely didn't have to bring that up. So, so for um, those who don't know, for Ray, uh, the nigga basically, uh, his man's passed away like last year, and this person is the one to have allegedly peed on Drake, Drake. during a private screening of Taken in 2010. And <laughs> Ti decided Old to places, rap. That's what he that. pissed on. I thought he got pissed on in the club. I'm not no, gonna hold nope. you. In the club and, is and crazy. Screening. It's even crazier. That is crazy. How am I gonna fight? <laughs> but I just, I mean, I understand that you bigging up your man's. I just don't think that that part was necessary. The peeing on Drake. I didn't know him and Drake even had any. Nah, I knew that issues. I didn't. Know, I didn't know that was still a thing because you know Drake went on that streak of like. Closing yeah. his beef. Didn't you know T.I. like uh, uh, slap the shit out of him, or somebody slapped the shit out of him too? Nah, because he got he got well, somebody fight. else. It was Diddy. Oh, it was Diddy. Yeah, yeah it was Diddy. <laughs> it was definitely Diddy. Nigga getting pissed on, slapped it. Sheesh. Because he light skinned, bro. I'm yeah, that eyes. It's it's because he's Canadian too. That too. <laughs> niggas don't niggas don't respect Canadians. But I, I don't. Oh, to me, that's not cloud chasing. Because if you if you really did it, then what clout is there to chase? Like that really happened. I mean, I just feel like it didn't have to be in there. Like especially right now in a climate where we're supposed to be banding together, and for your image, somebody like Ti who has been championing that kind of thing, especially on that album where I told you the last percentage of it. Is like real political. real political. I definitely you didn't need to throw that. I, in there. I was gonna say it's only like I would have to see the bar, but that was that's what would make it clout chasing to me because like if it doesn't have anything to do with the verse, like it's just like oh, I mean, like the nigga mean. just threw in oh my man's pissed on Drake and like kept it pushing. Then I would say that I don't know the a, bar off top. I would say that's a form of clout chasing. But like if he's really talking his shit, like whatever, however the the verse of bar went. That's what I'm saying. That's real rap. <laughs> that is, bro. Like, yeah, that I can't get rap. mad at that. I mean, I can get only, like I said, I don't get mad at it because it just, it just to me comes off a little in poor taste because of what you're trying to portray yourself. In, in poor taste, it's not cloud chasing. And I quote, mm-hmm. while I'm fighting my own, somehow got you home. So drunk in LA, end up pissing on Drake. Shit, fuck it. That's still my brother since back. <laughs> yeah, you see, he kind of threw it in there. Yeah, he kind of threw it in there, That's definitely called JC. Okay. Yo, nah, I hate when rappers do that, son. Niggas be disrespectful and then apologize the very next bar. I hate niggas, son. Oh, man. man this is bad. Man. Yeah, nah, that's a cloud chaser. That's a cloud chaser move. Bad, you're, you're starving right now, man. Don't ask. Don't ask. You're a fake starving. Oh, man, that's funny. I'm that's, not going for it. I'm, glad you, bad, I'm glad you read the bar. <laughs> Nah. That's still my brother. That nigga don't like Drake. <laughs> What's it called? But um, with that being said.